Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Brothers and sisters, I have here with me Al-Itqan fi Ulum al-Quran which is um, a book on the science of the Quran or the sciences of the Quran by Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala as we know that there are many many subjects that you study when you study Islamic studies, you study Aqeedah, Tawheed, Fiqh You study Tafsir, you study Arabic language, you study Al-Qawaid al You study Rasul Fiqh And one of the subjects that you study is Ulum Al-Quran Now Ulum Al-Quran is basically the subject in which you study about the different modes of recitation You study how the Quran was revealed and sat down upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You study, uh, you know uh, a, lot, a lot of these things, a lot of these things And generally speaking we live in a day and age where people are attacking the Qur'an In terms of its preservation They're attacking the Qur'an in terms of the way it was revealed And you know bringing shubuhat and doubts to the Muslims When you study this subject When you study this subject It really protects you from a lot of these doubts So in this subject you study, you know, the recitation of the Qur'an, you study the means of the Qur'an, you study the preservation of the Qur'an, and so on and so forth, uh, and so on and so forth. So, this book right here is the best book on the subject by Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahmanullah. It is a really comprehensive book. It's uh, right here in this publication I have this, I think it's about a thousand pages, if not really close to about a thousand pages. Anyway, I've not read the entirety of the book, I just picked it up recently um, This is my second time actually going to the book um, I just purchased it recently and I, and, I, and I wanted to read this section About how the Qur'an was revealed unto the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Because I had some questions that I wanted to answer, I wanted to just read a little bit more into it Now, this is not really a big topic Well, at least I didn't think it was a big topic I, I thought, you know what, maybe it was going to be a page or two, maybe three or four pages at max but subhanAllah, look how many pages he went into Just on the topic of how the Qur'an was revealed Onto the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Literally how it came down In it he discusses the secrets behind it being revealed in that way He discusses the wisdoms behind it He discusses, you know, so many things Wallahi, and, and the pages still go on And he's just talking about this Literally this, this was one little topic But the topic is so vast And it really blew my mind as to how deep Islamic scholarship is and how surface level we are in terms of our knowledge That we are unaware of these, these, these deep, 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 deep issues That are central to our Iman Like Wallahi, this is one of the, um, the pillars of the Iman The belief in the books, right? The belief in Allah, the belief in the angels, the belief in the messengers The belief in the books, the belief in the day of judgment The belief in the, in, in, in the Qadr, the good of it, the bad of it So a lot of the things here If we don't believe with regards to the Quran and the other books that were sent down then it can actually nullify one's iman in that pillar of 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 of, uh, of 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 faith, which is to believe in the books. So this is something that we should really go into and study and whatnot and so on and so forth. And to kind of just boost your aspiration towards studying more and learning the Arabic language more, so you can access these kind of materials, I wanted to mention to you a few benefits that I just read from just literally a few of these pages that absolutely blew my mind. So at the beginning, he talks about um, you know. And he brings evidences for um, when the Quran was revealed and how it was revealed. So he mentioned the ayah in Anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said we sent down the Quran on the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. So how was it sent down? He mentions the strongest view and he brings evidences for it was that it came down in one go on Laylatul Qadr. But then throughout the twenty-three years of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi prophethood, it came down piece by piece. It came down bit by bit. So at one go it was brought onto, onto the high, onto the lowest heaven, the heaven of this dunya The, the sky of this dunya, as the seven heavens, it was brought to the sky of this dunya And it was brought there into a place called Baytul Izza Baytul Izza And then from there, Jibreel alayhi salam, he brought it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa throughout the 23 years So what is the wisdom behind bringing it down throughout these 23 years So subhanallah I was shocked At the wisdoms One wisdom was that It became easier for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To memorize it Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He mentioned that You know uh, We did this So that we, 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 we brought it down to you Bit by bit So it could It could It could be established in your heart It could be firm in your heart Because remember The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Couldn't read He couldn't write 
the, the, the previous prophets, they got their revelations all in one go. It literally came down in one piece. Musa alayhi salam, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he sent down, he sent down um, the Torah in the, in the tablets. And some of the narrations he brings, they mentioned that the tablets were, it was in seven tablets. And obviously Musa alayhi salam, he became angry when he, when he came to the people and they were worshipping the cow. That he threw the, the seven tablets on, on, onto the ground um, out of anger at them. And uh, six of those seven tablets were lifted up and only one remained. And the Torah that, that was left with the Jews, it was only one seventh of the entirety of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set down to them. But we're going off topic. SubhanAllah, again, that's the benefit he mentions, which I was just shocked because I, I never knew that. But SubhanAllah, he mentions that you know, the first wisdom is so that it could be memorized by the Prophet because the Prophet couldn't read and write. But Musa, because it was sent down to him in that way, he could obviously read it. Was given to him directly on a tablet, which would be our equivalent of like us having like papers. I mean, it wouldn't be exactly our equivalent because, again, as you can see here, he mentioned that. Uh, uh, actually, not here. Sorry, where is it? He mentioned it. Okay, I'm gonna go off topic, so I'm not gonna go into that. But the point is, that's the first wisdom. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam could memorize it. The second wisdom is because, um, if it came down all at one go, the people would have run away from the Quran. Because of all of the commands and the prohibitions that are inside of the Qur'an The people would have run away from the Qur'an They would have run away from it It would have been too much Because all in one go they would have immediately had to Implement all of the commands and all of the prohibitions And he backs this up by the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha As he mentions there which is in Sahih Bukhari Where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said That had the, all of the commands and the prohibitions come down at one point The people would have never, never accepted it you would have told them to stop drinking alcohol, they would have never listened. But it came down piece by piece because it was building their iman, it was building their iman, it was building the iman until eventually it got to a point where they were ready to accept the revelation. They were ready to accept the revelation. Um, so that's another wisdom why it came down piece by piece. Um, another wisdom is because there were things that were taking place. There were things that were taking place at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And the Qur'an was responding to it Sometimes the people would ask a question and the Qur'an responded to the question Sometimes people would say a statement the Qur'an responded to the statement Sometimes people would do an action the Qur'an responded to the action Or, it would, it, 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 or, or so on and so forth So this, the, the Qur'an was actually, is actually playing an active role throughout the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And it was coming out in accordance to his, his da'wah and his seerah and his, and his prophethood so it was relevant So it was relevant throughout that So it came down in those stages And another reason is because of the, the nasikh and the musukh There were ayat that came down And then they were later abrogated 